Good uh, afternoon or good evening, and thank you all for joining today's presentation. Uh, my name is Annabeth Avila Arenas. I am a recent graduate from Northern Arizona University. I graduated uh, with my ma professional master's degree in climate science and solutions. Uh, my co-presenters were Peter Federici, Ramon Alatorre, and John Figueresi. Um, however, John and Peter unfortunately cannot make it today. Um, but Ramon will be helping me, uh, who is the climate and energy coordinator for the city of Flagstaff sustainability program, will be helping me out during our Q&A session. <clears throat> so let's get started. Uh, climate change has become a topic of most importance. Uh, it is a problem that will require um, global action. And, but however, for some communities, it is difficult to participate and be part of the solution. So today I am here to talk to you all about uh, expanding energy efficiency in Spanish speaking communities through inclusive science communication. Um, uh, this can really benefit communities and um, which will help with solutions towards combating climate change issues. So one of the best solutions towards combating climate change is energy efficiency. Uh, energy efficiency can really help decrease greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, it can improve health and wellness and help homeowners save on energy bills. The US Department of Energy estimates that weatherizing a home can save up to 10% on billing costs. Um, as well as increasing a home energy's efficiency can cut down about 500 million metric tons of carbon pollution a year by 2050. Uh, energy efficiency is able to create jobs as well. So uh, I did some research and for every $100 uh, million invested in retrofits, uh, about 12 jobs are created. Before I continue on to why it is important to include vulnerable communities, uh, such as Spanish speaking communities into energy efficiency efforts, uh, I would like to introduce the location where I focus my project on. Uh, this is Flagstaff, Arizona. Uh, Flagstaff, Arizona is one of the closest cities to the Grand Canyon. Uh, it is located in Northern Arizona um, at a elevation of about 7,000 feet and it, it was established in 1882. So the images I have on the screen um, are first of the map and the location of where Flagstaff is in Arizona. Uh, a few landmarks on there. Uh, the top right corner is the Lowell Observatory. Uh, it's well known for um, dis the discovery of Pluto. Um, underneath we have like the NAU campus and the San Francisco peaks on the back. Um, I tried to find one with snow, but I couldn't find a good one. <laughs> um, so importance of minority presence in environmental justice and policy to expand energy efficiency. So basically what I wanna say is why, or the question I wanna answer is why does their voice need to be heard? Why does it matter? In America, about 37 million people suffer from energy poverty. That being said, half of the U.S. population or uh, half of the U.S. Latino population lives in, in the country's most polluted cities. Uh, these communities are often, uh, often suffer from financial hardships. Uh, despite their minimal use of energy, low-income communities pay on average of 100 or sorry, 10% of household income towards energy bills uh, compared to the nationals average of 2.9%. Uh, this is because uh, to them it is more convenient to purchase a less energy efficient appliance that is cheaper than to invest on an energy star appliance or other if, uh, energy efficient installations. Uh, there is a need for more environmental justice awareness uh, in these communities, there is a lack of communication between them and their government officials. Um, continuing, uh, due to pollution caused by non-renewable energy sources, health problems are high in these communities. They often suffer from high rates of asthma and other respiratory health problems. 
So uh, another bit, a bit of research I did was that uh, from the International uh, Energy Agency, which states that energy efficiency can improve physical health, reduce respiratory and cardiovascular conditions, as well as arthritis and allergies. Uh, the EIA, um, or the International uh, Energy Agency, also states that in cold weathers or climates, energy efficiency can lower rates of excess uh, winter mortality, and in hot or warm climates, it can help with the risk of dehydration or reduce the risk of dehydration in these areas. Uh, most of these communities are usually unaware that there are resources there out there to help them with energy efficiency in their home. Um, as the National Renewable Energy Laboratory states that after weatherizing a low income home, the average savings would be of 35% on energy consumption. So this is, would be a big help if only they knew that these resources were available to them. Another um, challenge, and to me, this is, was one of the most important challenges that these communities are facing, was a uh, language barrier. So in 2020, the US Census estimated that 37.4 of Arizona's population speak other languages other than English. And that ling those languages, uh, the second one that comes in after English is the, uh, Spanish. The population of Flagstaff is about 75,000 and about 19% of that population is Latino or Hispanic. And about 8% is Native American. Out of Flagstaff's population, about 17 or 170,000 people speak Navajo or Diné, and about 16% of that population population speak another language other than uh, English, which is uh, Spanish. So even though there's hardships and challenges, uh, there is change happening. And this change is happening from the work of Northern Arizona University, the city of Flagstaff, and through student work. So during the pandemic in uh, summer of 2020, I interned for SWEEP, a Southwest Energy Efficiency Project. I worked on gathering information on climate action plans. I translated a few blog posts into Spanish. Um, and then uh, one of the biggest projects I participated on was serving organizations that represented low income, underrepresented and vulnerable communities. Uh, so speaking to these uh, organizations and their constituents really helped me notice the negative impacts that not having resources in these languages have on their livelihoods. I interviewed many organizations, uh, for example, and uh, Cheese Body Sona and Nevada and Cafe from New Mexico. So these, um, all of the interviews and conversations I had with the uh, organizations were focused on their level of knowledge of their organization's constituents um, that they had on energy efficiency. I asked them questions on their utility company's interaction with them, if they were familiar uh, with or knew of their utility companies uh, provided energy related resources, such as rebate programs or education, and how much they knew about uh, policies on energy efficiency in general and what their priorities and what other priorities they had related to energy efficiency. So throughout this internship and throughout the conversations and interviews I had, uh, I learned that energy efficiency is not a high priority in Spanish speaking communities. Some of the com comments that the organizations gave were, for example, energy efficiency is not a current priority in our community uh, because we, are not, we cannot afford to switch to much more efficient way of living. Uh, another answer was, or the moment we, at the moment we are not focused on energy efficiency because COVID-19 has become a priority in our community. There is no work and people in our communities are having a difficult time to even put food on the table. Uh, related to state and government, uh, their state and government um, and utility providers do not advertise rebate programs, any type of aid or help or education to to them and in, in their language or in a language they feel comfortable with. 
other organizations said that they do not, once there's a policy change, they do not get brought into the conversation soon enough. Um, they are they are brought in um, at last, at the end. And by that time, they're not able to fully put it, uh, give an input of what they wanna see uh, in the policy change and how um, a policy, policy change can better benefit them. Uh, another very important thing uh, uh, that they commented on or one of the uh, comments that they gave me was that there was a lack of education. Uh, people in the community do not know how to properly submit a comment to, for example, for us, the Arizona Corporation Commission. Uh, they do not how to, don't know how to properly speak to their Arizona representatives or any of their government officials. Um, about energy efficiency needs or any other environmental issue. Uh, through this internship, uh, I, it sparked an idea. And with the help of my advisors, I was able to work for the city of Flagstaff to try and bridge a solution to this problem, and at, at least at a local level. Uh, my goal was to let the Spanish speaking communities in um, know that there are there is help such as rebates and workshops that the city of Flagstaff provides, uh, that there are resources for them to help reduce their energy consumption and ultimately bring down the cost of ener uh, their energy bills. So the main project I worked on was translating the city of Flagstaff's home energy efficiency 101 workshop or in Spanish, el taller de eficiencia energética en el hogar siendo uno. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is an example or uh, how the workshop looks in Spanish. Um, that is how it will look like on the webpage. The home energy efficiency project or workshop is available to everyone. However, only Flagstaff residents are eligible to receive a kit filled with items that will help reduce energy efficiency in the home. Um, and I will elaborate on that a little bit uh, further in the presentation. Uh, I translated every part of the workshop, which included ads, quizzes, informational sheets, and videos. So I subbed the videos and on the screen, you can see an example of that. Uh, the videos showed staff members from Cozy Home and the City of Flagstaff Sustainability Section go through installations and DIY projects. The workshop included six sections. Each section needed to be completed by passing a quiz and fully watching all the videos. Uh, at the completion of the workshop, residents were able to get a certificate and were able to customize their own DIY energy efficiency kit. The kit includes uh, switch and outlet installation sealers, window shrink slabs, uh, V strips or felt weather stripping. Uh, they have an option of LED lights, uh, light bulbs or amber lights, which help with the um, dark sky considerations. Um, they are, uh, the kit also includes caulking and caulking guns. Uh, there are multiple informational pamphlets and other tools to help with easy DIY home energy efficiency projects. Uh, both the English and the Spanish version take about 45 to 60 minutes to complete and each kit is valued at about 30 to um, $50. And on the screen, I also put the names of each section. So the first one was a welcome and registration. The second was uh, uh, water efficiency. The third is the dark skies consideration. Or the fourth section was the energy efficiency, which was uh, the major part of the workshop. Um, the fifth section was to um, build your own um, kit. And the last, um, section was uh, the certificate or like, you know, the you have completed the workshop section. Uh, on the screen, I provided um, examples of the Spanish version of the workshop. The first image on here is uh, the registration form um, in Spanish. Uh, the top right corner is uh, an example of how this each section looks online. So as you can see, there's the title of the section, 
um, and followed by a video and then whatever information you needed, like informational um, documents uh, and the quiz uh, that needed to be completed. At the bottom is an example of a uh, the translation of that ad that's at the bottom. So Northern Arizona University involvement. Um, NAU uh, is currently working on a climate action plan for the university and um, the sustainability, the, the Office of Sustainability is in charge of this climate action plan. Uh, they have been extremely inclusive of the community's uh, input. They have scheduled, I believe in 2019, 2020, they scheduled forums where NAU students, uh, the professors, and anyone around the community can come and give their voice as to what they want to see in the climate action plan. Uh, NAU or Northern Arizona University also provides um, master programs such as the Climate Science and Solutions Professionals Masters to help students get firsthand experience in solving climate change related issues. Uh, these programs um, help students gain experience with speaking to government officials and teaches them to take part in climate action through writing, presenting, and creative in, creating innovative solutions. Um, the science communication part or the training uh, focuses, uh, helps the students focus uh, on strain, strengthening their ideas and a, um, they are able to learn what is the best way to share the knowledge of science to the general public and hopes to include everyone in a climate change solutions. The city of Flagstaff. So the city of Flagstaff is working hard to include Spanish speaking communities and other vulnerable communities into their fight against climate change and help improve towards a cleaner city. Um, in the climate action and adaptation plan of 2018, the city states that they are aware of climate uh, change affecting vulnerable communities. And as such, the city will work to ensure the participation of the entire Flagstaff community. Uh, the CAP or the Climate Action and Adaptation Plan also states that they will work on establishing partnerships with communities as well as building leadership and involve diverse communities in the projects. Call to action. So this is now what we want to see, right, in the future. So some solutions that um, I propose or I think are the best is uh, first and most important to involve these vulnerable communities um, to put have an input in climate change uh, policies or any policy change, especially when it comes to energy efficiency as they are the most impacted by pollution caused from non-renewable resources of energy. Um, another thing is making information available in Spanish and other language can be a huge benefit to these communities. Um, another thing that is extremely important is including the youth. Um, it is, they are the ones, uh, especially, oh, sorry, especially from uh, the youth from Spanish speaking communities as they are the ones that will inherit the world next, right? Um, they, these students are often probably first generation students uh, that are now just able to get a higher education. So teaching these students the importance of this topic will make a noticeable change in years to come. Uh, there needs to be an increase of resources in these communities, such as rebate programs, and education in their language. Uh, their voice needs to be included in policy change. Local and the state governments really need to learn to interact with these communities in order to make appropriate changes that best benefit these communities. I believe that as scientists, educators, and advocates for climate change and justice, we need to begin to include these communities in the conversation. As scientists, I believe we have failed to properly communicate the importance of climate change to these communities. So it is time for us to step up and learn to communicate with the general audience and with these communities with a high, uh, that are highly impacted by climate change in order to improve our planet's health and to shape a better future for generations to come. Lastly, I would like to thank my advisors, Peter and John for their help and support and Ramon for trusting me and working with me on this important project. 
And I thank you all for listening to me. Um, and uh, now I believe we have about 20-ish minutes for any questions or any discussions you would all like to have. Thank you. Thank you, Annabeth. That was very informative and quite interesting. Um, for everyone else who's here, um, please feel free to um, turn on your camera so we can really create a community. Um, yes, we might be virtual, but we are still um, a community for inclusive SciComm here. Um, and um, that way you can feel free to ask questions um, either directly or via the chat um, feature as well. Um, I'll start, so I have one question, I'll start, I'll get this started. Um, so you said you've worked uh, a lot with Flagstaff, but how, right, like within Flagstaff, how is this, um, how do you envision this expanding broadly, like even within Arizona? Um, and has that conversation started? Like, like what's happening on that level? Um, because like what you presented was great for one community, but is it, is it dependent on the community or can this be expanded, I guess is what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I believe it can be expanded right now. I just focused on one area just because I am located in Flagstaff and I kind of have that already, I say that one-on-one -on -one trust with the people here. So we, you know, like I was like, I want to focus here and um, we did it like we're doing some social media um, outreach as well to get the community involved. Um, with that, uh, I'm hoping that this project can be like a, a starter project for those other communities in Arizona as well. And I might add from sort of a city perspective, uh, I've been working in city government now since uh, January of 2020. And one of the things that I've learned since being in city government is um, kind of just like how much cities, in, in a way, steal from each other, right? Uh, there's the Urban Sustainability Directors Network, uh, these, these kind of communities where we try to share best practices and things like that, and being able to share the work that Annabeth did for us. Uh, and to say, you know, we put a course online, uh, we finally kind of got shoved into that space because of COVID. Um, and now, you know, members from our community can take this course anytime. They don't necessarily have to be available at five o'clock on a Tuesday when we were holding the course. If they, you know, couldn't, I don't know, find childcare or whatever of the reason, now they can do it on their own time. And so in, in some ways that was like one step towards making it more inclusive and available, uh, but we still weren't serving uh, the Spanish speaking population. And so for Annabeth to be able to take on a huge lift like all that was a tremendous amount of work you could see the, the platform and the videos and the quizzes and she even did some social media like filmed herself uh it was it was a lot of work uh to be able to take this course that we had created and to make it available to that uh, member of our community now we talk about it in other communities from urban sustainability develop uh, directors network and others uh, they look at what we're done, what we've done, what Annabeth has done, uh, and you know we we kind of set the bar to say you know take a few of these steps, uh, kind of you know look a little bit at what we did. We still have a long ways to go, certainly, but this was uh, a project that we can kind of hang our hat on and encourage other communities to do. So hopefully that uh, that will also be one of the ways in which Annabeth's work creeps a little bit beyond just black stuff. Mm -hmm. So on that note, then I have a follow-up question, Rowan. So you talked about how cities obviously, I'll say learn from each other or inspire each other. Um, are there other cities doing this um, in other parts of the country? Do you know? Um, I wouldn't be able to name a specific city uh, that has uh, kind of finished the project. We've had a couple of cities that have reached out uh, because they, they learned about the project um, and they weren't at the place yet where they even had an online course. They, they liked our online course piece and we were like, 
Uh, and don't forget to like think about the language aspect of this as well. Um, so we have heard from some communities that are, are interested in it. They like sort of multiple layers of the uh, accessibility that the project was taking on. Um, and I think there are some communities that do a better job than others at recognizing um, sort of the, the citizens, the residents in their community um, that have, that, that don't speak the like, primary English language and, and some cities do a better job than others uh, of having programming available in multiple languages. It's the afternoon, everyone's so quiet and... Um. Uh, Annabeth, I have a question uh, for you. So you were doing all this. I wanna know like from your perspective, what do you think like the biggest things were, the hardest things were to overcome essentially? What were the biggest things that you had to really um, overcome? I don't know whether you said a little bit of this or what um, in the talk, but uh, I was curious. Um, just yeah. from your perspective. Yeah. Um, so terminology was a little difficult uh, throughout the project, honestly, just because some words that, you know, like energy efficiency and if, and, uh, and if, uh, efficiency energetica, you know, they have like a, there's like a little difference between them too. Um, a lot of like the other technical terms um, were a little bit difficult to translate into Spanish. So I had to work with the language in order to try to get the same point across, you know, the same information across and try not to change too much. Um, another thing is, um, let's see, there's when translating, um, some things are shorter in Spanish or in English, whereas in Spanish, it takes a lot more descriptive words. And I did have a little bit difficulty with that. And those those are the two <laughs> the two major challenges I had through, uh, during these this project. I can only imagine the joys of jargon is already a thing in one language. So trying to do that in multiple languages just sounds like a its own challenge. Yeah, yeah, I was. <laughs> Hi, my name is Alberto. We've got a question for your social media campaign. Are you working with any Latino organizations like uh, Latino Outdoors? So for the social media section, um, I only did um, like a small clip of myself, uh, a small recording of myself, uh, trying to invite the Spanish speaking communities to take uh, the workshop. Um, I didn't necessarily put it on a through a specific organization. It's just through the city of Flagstaff. So they'll be releasing that whenever uh, the workshop gets launched. Um, uh, and then, uh, yeah, so it's just through the city of Flagstaff, just trying to invite uh, the community to come and take uh, the, the workshop and try to include them in, in, you know, energy efficiency and try to help them out with their, uh, their, co their billing costs and, and uh, electricity bills and stuff like that. Yeah, you recommend to get traction to collaborate and hope other influencers will promote your work. So Latino Outdoors, they're on Twitter. I'm, I'm sure they have other uh, social media channels, but that's the one I'm most familiar with. And then I monitor social media, especially in general STEM use by minorities. And I noticed that uh, Latino Conservation Week gets a lot of traction. Um, and so then that's another com community. So hashtag Latino Conservation Week. Um, their Twitter account is at LCW underscore national. Just a thought. Thank you. I took a note of that. Thank you. So there's a question in the chat um, from, uh, have you had any feedback from folks who are taking the translated course? 
Uh, I'm curious if breaking down the language barrier helps with addressing the other considerations you mentioned. Yeah, and I can speak to that a little bit. Um, we've had, I think, two or three folks that have completed the course and the that has been translated by Annabeth. Uh, the course for us is typically a winter time uh, program uh, because when the when the weather gets cold, that's when a lot of people are are thinking about energy efficiency measures and what is it that they can do out in their own homes. Um, and so we we start kind of pushing either the social media campaign or the other uh, advertising to let people know that uh, the course is available to take during that time. So uh, we haven't had a tremendous amount of uptake yet, but we're kind of getting uh, ramped up for our first, our first real season uh, with the materials because Annabeth was able to finish this project for us uh, late this spring. Uh, so kind of on the tail end of our, of our time. And uh, we really, the feedback we got so far was just like, thank you for having it translated. Uh, we didn't go on like a deeper dive uh, to, to find out if they had like any other uh, feedback constructive or otherwise, um, just, just an appreciation. But uh, going forward, that is one of the, the difficulties for us as a section um, is, you know, is being able to collect some of that feedback. Uh, we don't have much of the capacity uh, in-house to be able to have sort of like rich dialogue uh, with folks that um, that don't speak English will often have to rely on um, sort of members in other sections of, of the city uh, that have sort of the language skills. So in some ways, you know, we, we knew that we had this gap. We brought in Annabeth to work on this project to be able to provide services, but then that, that ongoing thing is uh, also a really important piece of being able to continue to uh, serve that community because when they call and say they want their kit, uh, we have to be able to figure out how to uh, coordinate all of those logistics as well. Uh, and so, you know, there's still gaps that need to be addressed uh, and, and figuring out how to uh, address those gaps uh, continue to be uh, something that we're working on. Anyone else have any questions, comments, thoughts? Annabeth, this is pretty amazing work. Like, it's just very inspiring to see this. Everything you've done and then just to see it being like put in place. This is uh, pretty amazing. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> I just, as an immigrant into this country, I think back to my parents and I'm like, right, like what would help them? And so this, like what you said, I was like, this would be great. Um, so wow, that just excited me very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, well, doing this project, I as well was thinking about my parents. They both um, uh, migrated here from Mexico and they don't understand anything. <laughs> you still, to this day, I'm still translating most of the people who work for them. So it's just like, you know, I wanted a, other parents, you know, migrants to be able to understand this important topic. Uh, my parents fortunately have me now and I'm teaching them as I go as well, learning. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's amazing. Um, I mean, it's hard enough to be an immigrant and to learn everything. So to have something like this as, an, as a resource, I think is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And it's an important thing too. I mean, it's just not the like the English speaking community that need to, you know, um, help with the whole climate change issue. Uh, everybody needs to have an input uh, and everybody can help out with that. And Annabeth, can you remind me, did you say that you actually attended one of these workshops live with your parents? Is that, I did. Am I remembering so, correctly? Uh, the, yeah, so the first um, exposure I had to this workshop, I, it was live with uh, my dad. Um, and that was back when I was still an undergrad. Um, I, our, our house is, was super inefficient in energy. Um, so I 
you know, they came to talk to us um, in one of our classes and I just took him to one of them. And as they were going through it, I was translating whatever uh, the staff was trying to uh, show us. And then at the end, we you know we got the kids and he, he, he's usually like, you know, the fixer upper in the house. So it was pretty easy, you know, to inst make up most of those installations. And honestly, it has worked, you know, like the, the biggest change in our home right now was the, the window, the window seals, the little plastic film that was around. Yeah. And especially during the winter time, we noticed that that made a huge difference. Yeah, and even just observing Annabeth with her family uh, when we had been advertising the workshops before, because these, these workshops started in a, a place where we delivered them live at different locations throughout the community for an hour. Um, and we saw Annabeth like translating in real time uh, to her parents. And we had made the nominal offer to have translation services available. Um, but I think what we noticed was that what actually happens is that typically parents show up with their kids and their kids end up doing the translating for them and um, yeah, one of the things that we're also thinking about is rather than like having uh, like translation services available at the live sessions when we're able to do them live again um, is to maybe even just have one that's like just held in Spanish um, so that it's, it's that space that's not necessarily sort of like simultaneous and, and just trying to make it uh, I don't know, a little bit more welcoming I suppose in that way but uh, it was definitely like a noticeable observation when when you have kids uh, translating for their parents during the programming that you're providing and and trying to you know understand whether or not uh, you know, they're they're taking that extra step is is there more that we can be doing to meet them where they're at? Hi everyone, my name is Karen Arcos and I just wanted to start off just by thanking Annabeth and everyone else who's been presenting. I really found it, the presentation informative as well and I can definitely relate to translating and how much it, how much work that takes. Um, so yeah, thank you first of all. And secondly, I was just gonna say in terms of translating for future workshops, if, if anything, if any workshops are held virtually in the future like all things considered that now so much so much is happening virtually like I wouldn't mind translating I have experience translating in Spanish as well so and I'm fluent so if that ever comes up as as a possibility I'd be happy to help as well yeah thank you Karen <laughs> Oh, no worries. Kudos to you for all that work, because that is a ton of work. I can definitely relate. I've done that. Yeah. I'll, honest, I'll say we weren't expecting necessarily that Annabeth was going to get it done in the spring season. We were kind of expecting that it might wrap up and we'd have something ready to launch this fall. And then when she was like, it's done last spring, we were like, you've got to be kidding. Uh, yeah, we were really impressed. And like I said, we've had a handful of folks that have already taken it and that have appreciated it. So thank you, Annabeth. Yeah. Thank you all for the opportunity too. Anyone have any other thoughts, comments? Um, I pres and from my understanding, and I haven't played around with the um, the program itself much, but contact information is ex available for people who have agreed to share theirs. So I presume if anyone wants to reach out to Annabeth, they can. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Correct. Um, yeah, and I might, Annabeth, do you recall how it is that you actually got connected with us? Um, because I think that's kind of an interesting story uh, in terms of like how it is that we made the connection and even to move forward with this project. Yeah, so how it started was I needed a project in order to graduate for my science communication certificates. 
Um, mm -hmm. And at the time, I didn't have anything planned. Um, I didn't even know what the, the class or the consisted of and, until that's, uh, I think the semester before. That's when I spoke to uh, my professor, John, um, or advisor as well. Um, and then uh, we had done previous work as a class with the city of Flagstaff, I believe. And uh, through John's help, I was able to get in contact with Ramon and some of the sustainability uh, in the office people and staff. Um, from then on, I proposed uh, to uh, translate whether it was some uh, type of environmental related or climate change related document. Um, and that's when uh, the city of Flagstaff or the sustainability offices offered, you know, like, hey, we have this workshop. Um, we would like it translated. Um, and I, I took on the project. And after that, um, I just worked during the semester, um, my last semester on translating that workshop but yeah it was things i think for right. me the the bit in that story is that like gosh how lucky did we get because we weren't even looking for like somebody to provide this service for us annabeth came knocking on the door uh and so i know like karen mentioned like that she does translation services and and i think they're in a lot of like sustainability sections and like local governments there, there's sometimes this like, acknowledgement that we have these gaps and then when when we got approached it was like yes of course like we'll, we'll find something we actually had to like really create this like prioritization of like well like what is it that we want annabeth to translate is it going to be part of that climate action and adaptation plan that she was talking about or do we want something that's going to be actual programming made available for the community and we had some conversations with her about what she thought might have the biggest impact but um you know it was one of those again where like we got lucky that uh, annabeth was was seeking something out and and we when we talk to other com communities we tell them like don't don't wait on that see if you can find those services um but if if you're willing to sort of reach out like it wasn't quite a cold call like annabeth mentioned she had an advisor who had a pre-existing relationship with us um and so that connection was made relatively easily but um i will say there's there's probably some pent-up demand and like this desire like if we have the bandwidth and the capacity to be able to do some of this that we would be excited to do more of it um and it, it's a gap throughout communities all throughout uh, the United States, and, and we need to we need to compensate people for the work that is being done, certainly. Um, but being able to kind of like get the ball rolling um, can really help. So I just wanted to commend Annabeth for, for for reaching out and kind of taking that proactive action that we didn't take ourselves. Perfect. I mean, this was very inspiring. Um, I think if there's no other um, questions, comments, still, I don't want to close the Zoom window here. So, but otherwise, I look forward to seeing many of you tomorrow at the sessions, um, as well as Saturday, both the sessions and at the um, social, the virtual social, um, which the platform is actually pretty cool if any of you have had a chance to play around with that where you get to move your avatar and it is video around to go and talk to people. Um, and I'm very excited for that.